How's it going, everybody? It's uh, Brian from SecretsBeverageLab.com, and this is the Secrets Beverage Lab podcast for Monday, April 15th, 2013, episode number 31. We have we have gone past the golden age of 30, folks. We're getting we're still trucking every week. So uh, most importantly, tell a friend to uh, to listen or watch uh, weekly every Monday at eight o'clock Eastern time um, at night because Norm has to go to bed at 8:30. So we yeah. have to wait. <laughs> I think you're the first one to bed every night. It's very true. That, that's me. <laughs> but uh, SBLpodcast.com is the place to be if you're watching this live. Where you're now watching it in the show notes to keep you more engrossed in what's going on. So. You can you can check out the you know what we're talking about and you can chat as well by just clicking the link in the chat uh, on the show notes page. So uh, we're gonna kick it off uh, again. I'm Brian from Seagulls Beverage Lab. Thanks for watching. Out of Portsmouth, New Hampshire, I'm drinking the Marshall Wharf Camp Dog <coughs> Imperial Pale Ale in my sweet uh, Boston Marathon 26.2 glass. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and welcome a special guest uh, and uh, co-host this week. We have Craig Hendry from uh, Raise Your Pints. How's it going, Craig? Going good. Thank you for having me. Yeah, what, what are you drinking today? I'm drinking uh, Nola Bruin Hopatulis out of New Orleans. Nice. Raise your pints, tulip glass. Good and looking glass. Very hoppy. It can be a palate killer at times, but it's a great beer. Oh, awesome. All right. We got Mike in the middle. What's up? Hey, not too much, man. Um, Mike Meredith out of Salem, Massachusetts, uh, at Mo Meredith on Twitter. And I am also drinking uh, out of my 26.2 uh, giant mug today. Uh, and uh, I am, uh, <laughs> I put two Yingling Light Lagers in here. I'm going light today. <laughs> yeah, you can see right, you can see right through it. Looking good. Right, exactly. It's just clear as day, but gorgeous as ever. So, speaking of, speaking of gorgeous as ever, Norm, what's up, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> Not much. Uh, Norman Miller, Metro West Daily News, at Real, Real Beer Nut. I'm drinking a Bell's Oberon and. I'm also drinking out of my 26.2 mile Sam Adams uh, pint glass. It's not the mug, but um, that's about it. Yep, yeah, sweet. And uh, Shawnee Boy, what's going on, buddy? Hey, this is um, Sean Jansen from uh, TwoBearGuys.com. Today, coming at you hot is a Centennial <laughs> IPA from from Founders. Um, and I'm drinking it not out of a 26.2 glass, out of one of these Pilsner Raquel sweet beer bloggers glasses that we have there. Ooh. Sweet. Fancy I'm glass. I'm pretty sure you had Centennial IPA last episode? No, I had uh, the Notch Saison. Oh, how many of ah. uh, It was two episodes ago. This guy. Uh, so I probably. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I. Feel stupid. Ladies and gentlemen, stupid idiot right here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, like myself, Mike, and Norm have, have the glasses commemorating the, the race today. Uh, for those of you watching this live or even if it's taped, you clearly know what's ha what's been going on in Boston, and uh, hopefully everyone that, that you know in Boston is safe. Uh, as we know, explosions went off at the finish line of the Boston Marathon. So uh, as of now, it's 8 o'clock, and still nothing's you know confirmed or denied or whatever. So uh, I don't know. Quick uh, quick wishes for everyone. I know, Sean, you just came back from Boston. Yeah, I just came back from Boston. We were in there this morning to, um, to watch the, uh, the traditional uh, Red Sox game. Um, they played the uh, Devil Rays, and um, they, we got out of the game, and we were actually heading over towards uh, the area. We were past Kenmore, uh, probably about four or five blocks. So we were about a half a mile away from the finish line. That's actually where we're where the same point where it happens, where we were headed to go cheer people on that were running. So uh, it got a little it got a little weird because all of a sudden, um, like they just stopped the runners and have, haven't done a marathon before, and you're like. Yeah, what happened was a car accident. Was there something they're trying to divert around, and yeah. you really didn't, you really didn't know. And um, but there was a lot of police presence. That's crazy. I mean, and and you you look at the video, and, and they they seem to rush over there pretty quickly. So you know, the, well well responsive. And Norm, you were uh, you, you were almost late to this to the show tonight because you know you were obviously yeah. covering a lot of it. Yeah, the marathon. I work at uh, like like I said on this uh, hangout. I, I work at Metro West Daily News, and when I'm not writing about beer, I'm also the crime reporter. So you can imagine today was a little crazy. Luckily, we had some reporters that were not hurt, but they were at the scene. Uh, we had, You should see some of the images our photographer sent over today. Uh, not all of them are going to be able to make it in the paper. I mean, some of them are just way too graphic. He just shot. He just, you know, total professional. He just got his camera and just started shooting photos. And after everything done, he'll go through them, and he'll pick the ones we can run. But it's, it's like one of those crazy days. I mean, 
I remember I covered the Boston Marathon the year after 9-11, so it was the first marathon uh, after 9-11. So, I mean, I've never seen so much security for an event, and the security is still there. And I, it was funny, about an hour before the explosion, I was at the Framingham Police Department uh, talking to the spokesman for the Framingham Police, who was in the Massachusetts Emergency Management Agency bunker during the marathon. That's where they run all security for the whole mar all 26.2 miles. We we're just commenting how this was one of the quietest marathon Mondays probably since 2002. Uh, nothing on the banner, no major issues throughout the whole race. It was just suddenly just turned around. I think with 10 of three, 10 of two. Yeah, I mean. Uh... For what it's worth, I uh, hope, hope everyone's safe. And it's obviously tough to talk about beer during a time like during a time like this. It does suck. Um, the, the show's going to go on, and, and obviously, like I said, tell a friend if, uh, if if they're looking for if you're watching live now. Tell you know if if you want, want a little bit of a you know some happy happy stuff. We'll turn these frowns upside down in a second once we start talking about beer. But I uh, hope everyone's safe and, and sound that that we know in, in being town. Uh, for uh, Sean is doing the, the chat room. We got beer on dark side. We got myself, Craig, and. DJ there was a Dan with a double N. Yeah, but he's disappeared right now. <laughs> uh, as as my computer would have it, froze. But uh, I'm I'm coming back in the chat. Don't you worry. But uh, and I I just a couple quick shout outs this week. I'm I'm testing our new lower third here. I want to give a couple quick shout outs to some Twitter followers down here. We got Rick Bruce, aka my dad. We got at BM Dark Side, who's always with us. We got uh, at BM Watts, he also knows Ben Watts. We uh, beer buddy. you know beer buddy Ben. You see him on the podcast. We also have uh, Dukester, who's out of the West Coast, and uh, Chatta from If My Coaster Could Talk. He's been on the show a couple times as well. So big shout outs to them. Uh, and let's get right into it. So Craig came. Uh, he, he didn't. He didn't come anyway. He came. He came to his laptop from, <laughs> all the way from <laughs> Mississippi. And uh, I, I wanted to bring in here because we had talked about um, the the Raise Your Pints effort uh, to legalize homebrewing in Mississippi. And uh, a, I wanted to congratulate you on that. Um, that that's that, that's some big work you did down there, and uh, obviously appreciated. Um, and so I, I wanted to bring in so to to give us a little background on on raise your pints and and how how you got started with all of that. Well, uh, I started back uh, about 2007. I actually started, guess what, a beer blog. And uh, as I was looking for topics and started thinking and wondering why our beer selection sucked in Mississippi, and why I was having to, you know, bootleg it in from out of state. Why did Mississippi only have one brewery at the time? And uh, so I started researching laws and then figured out why exactly why it was that one that one law that was restricting us on the ABW side. And uh, so I reached out to the Free the Hops folks, uh, Dan and Klein down there, and I said, Hey, I'd like to do something like that in Mississippi. You know, can I talk to you about it? And he said, Hey, there's other people that have asked me the same thing. So he put us together. And uh, we started uh, not long after that, uh, about uh, late, about 2007, the same time, and uh, tried, submitted some bills. And this was actually our sixth year of, I guess that's right, submitting bills. And uh, it took us a couple of years to figure out that to uh, to get anything done at the Capitol, you got to have a lobbyist, and that means you got to have a lot of money. And so we officially incorporated, come up with the name Raise Your Pints, and started working on an ABW bill. And two, two of the four of the original uh, founders of the group were homebrewers, too. So we said, while we're working on this, let's work on homebrewing, too. So we made that goal number two. And uh, so for the longest time, we were working on two issues. And finally, last year, in July 1st, we, well, actually last April, governor signed the bill. And we raised the ABW cap, so now we've got up to uh, actually 10 by volume uh, percent beers brewed and sold in the state. So la a year ago, we had one brewery in the state. Now we're on the verge of six opening up here within the next couple of months. And that's that's fantastic. It's some great growth. It, it is. And so we've got the ABW out of the way and then the home brewing bill, the, the home brewing issue which, uh, as you guys know, you know, it's legal federally in 48 other states. And, and so we said, let's talk about that one, too. And it became our goal number one. And I, I'm original co-founder of the group, and I was VP, and Butch Bailey was our president up until till July of last year. And then he stepped aside, and then I took over as president and continued to push to get homebrewing legalized. And, and we, we, we got it through pretty easily this year, probably easier than last year's. ABW effort, 
and uh, the governor signed a bill a few weeks ago, and it'll go into effect July 1st, so I can finally start homebrewing. Awesome. Well, I mean, so I, I don't know much about, uh, you know, the South and, and, and beer myself, but uh, is there is there a Brewers Guild down there, or is that is that kind of real? There actually is one forming right now in Mississippi. They actually started a few months ago, and are still they still haven't even elected officers yet. Nice. Uh, they're trying to get it going, but uh, all the ones that are forming, uh, of like Lazy Magnolia, and then we've got two breweries in Hasburg that one of them they've already started brewing our beer. So uh, those two, and then we've got uh, a contract brewer in Jackson and. Uh, who's the other one? Oh, uh, Crooked Letter, Ocean Springs, brand new brewery, and their beers just made it up here to Jackson last week, and I finally got to have my first full pints. So those brewery, the heads of those breweries are getting together, and they're going to form a guild, and uh, they're going to kind of pick up the torch and, and run with it, you know, as far as the legislative side, because uh, we've been doing this for a long time, and I'm tired, and... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's time to it's time to drink and brew beer, damn it! You exactly. no, it's work. <laughs> yeah, rather than free the hops, it should be drink the hops. <laughs> that, should, that should be the name of the Brewers Guild. <laughs> drink I mean, the hops. So you 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 spent all this time fighting for, for you know, fighting the government for for this. Is there anything that you've learned that it's? I mean, was it was it harder than you thought? Was it easier than you thought? Well, we we learned that you can't can't go up there and say, I want this. I want, you know, in the beginning we did, we said, hey, I want access to better beer. I want a better beer selection. That will not fly. You have to go in there and say, here's why changing this will be good for the state. And so we changed our tone, we changed our tactics, and then went at it at economic development and tourism side. And once we did that, they really started to listen. You know, we could say, hey, we're the last state on ABW, because we were the last state with the lowest cap. And same on a home brewing, you know, last state. And I said, that's good, we should change it. But they wouldn't get, you know, they really, you know, didn't deep down care. So we found out you have to get them passionate about your cause and you have to explain to them, here's why chain, fixing this will benefit the state, you know, yep. tax revenue, jobs, tourism. And, you know, once we did that, they, they'd listen. And then after we were successful and then they see the growth from ABW beer, you know, deal last year. And, you know, I was, God, I was up at the Capitol probably 15 to 20 times this year during the homebrew session because I, I, my day job is just a few miles from there. And, you know, I run into politicians and they know who I am and they'd say, hey, well, you know, we're, we're ready. We're waiting on it to come forward so we can vote. So there, you, you see that change and, and, and they became passionate about it and they wanted to see it bill, see the bill pass. And, and you realize that when, you know, when it would come to a floor, for a floor vote and it would pass and there'd be cheers from the floor and you realize, hey, we, we've done our job. We've, we've made them want to see this stuff pass. That's crazy. What was the most difficult hurdle you had to go over? Because it seems like I remember reading a lot of this. I, like majority of people who are mass produced beer drinkers, but I'm guessing most of the legislators were too, and from their point, they're probably looking at it, who needs to hire ABV and why do you need to bother brewing beer at home? Was that just a big thing to get over those misconceptions and preconceived notions about what beer should be? Well, uh, as far as that, Alabama had a harder time with that than we did. With us, 40% of our counties are dry counties. And you've got a lot of the elected officials that, you know, I, I had some tell me at, at evening socials with a beer in their hand, I support you, but I got to vote against you. And they would do that because they represented dry areas. And that's sad because, but. You know, at least they were honest and told us, you know, what they were doing. But thankfully, we had enough votes, you know, on both sides of the Senate and the House to, to get it through. To get are all those places still dry, or they, did that change at all? No, no. A, lot of, a lot of dry counties. You got, you know, it's the uh, it's the Bible Belt down here. So, the, you know, the preachers will wake up and, and come out publicly and, and oppose, you know, basically anything alcohol. It doesn't matter, you know. You, you, you can try to you know reason with them, but it doesn't matter. It's alcohol, and quote alcohol is bad. So that's crazy. That's one of our biggest you know hurdles we had to face. Oh, well, here's the sin. <laughs> hey, I'll do it. Oh, come on, I gotta get it in there. <laughs> there he is. Like, it's not Halloween. I, <laughs> yeah, not yet. <laughs> do live in which city? That's, that's true. I mean, that that's definitely a, a tough opponent too. 
poo-poo, right? I mean, re religion and beer, sh ugh, it, it's, it's such a long road, <laughs> but it, 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 I can't imagine that being a, a, a unwise opponent. I don't know. Um, was it uh, easier for the home brewing after you did the raising the ABV? It just was it more, they were more accepting after they already voted to raise the ABV? Absolutely, and, and we saw that when it came uh, up for committee uh, review, committee votes, and then full four votes, and we had, you know, we had a few questions, and one, you know, we, we got our, our bill sponsor and, uh, you know, some of the, the people that would get up, uh, the politicians would get up and present the bills and four vote, but we educated them very well and presented them, you know, here's the questions that probably be asked, and, and you know, questions would pop up and they could fire right back and people would ask questions would go, okay, and they'd sit down and, you know, it wasn't real. We didn't, we had hardly, hardly any real serious debate on the homebrewing side and I expected it, but it, I mean, it sailed right through and, and I was, I was pleased. Awesome. And then, I mean, for, for, those, for those watching, I mean, well, for those listening, you should go to YouTube, but for those watching, uh, Check out Craig's rig. Well, that sounds weird. I knew it. I was gonna say. check out Craig's home brewing rig behind him. You sure that's it's, not uh, to make lobsters or something? <laughs> oh, that makes lobster. That, that thing is legit. He can make lobster in one and brew in the other. Perfect. So, uh, but uh, as we were talking before the show started, you, you you have a couple brews brews in the works. What what kind of beers do you usually like to make? Uh, probably the one I do more often is Russian Imperial Stout. That's that's my favorite. Ooh. I brewed that yesterday and. And I've actually got one in a whiskey barrel, and then I've got another one in secondary that will most likely go to a whiskey barrel here soon. Uh, that and Belgians, and, and then I occasionally I do some easy drinking stuff. Or I've got a five-tap kegerator right over here you can't see. But uh, we had a big St. Patty's parade, and I took every keg I had to that parade. So it's actually empty right now, so I'm trying to catch up and put some, some beer in it. But I like to do cream ales and kolsches and and so, you know some of the lighter stuff and occasional IPAs, but I also compete. I like homebrew competitions, so I, I, I will brew whatever I think I can enter and, and, and win. That's awesome. I mean, Brian, how does that make you feel as a home brewer? Uh, Mike, now? Mike and I just did a five gallon batch, what, a year, a year ago? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we gotta get back on doing it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we'll, we'll, we'll get back to it, but uh, and, and I, I can't, I, I can't, I have to give you a more more props, Craig, because you you mentioned you have a day job as well. So I can't I can't imagine balancing balancing a nine to five as well as tackling government is just got to make you some sleepless nights. Yeah, it, it does. You know, I do have a day job that's not beer related, and and that surprises a lot of people. They say, "Wait, beer's not your." Job. <laughs> and so, but yes, I have the day job, and I actually have a family and two kids. You know, so it's. Uh, you know, it's kind of taking its toll, and then that goes back to me saying, I'm a little tired right now, and I kind of want to relax. You know, I'm going to stay part of Raise Your Pints for sure, but we're going to, right now, we don't have an immediate legislative goal. We've got people coming at us and saying, why don't y'all do this? Why don't y'all do that? And, you know, and, and really what we talked about the last few years was, you know, for the benefit of the consumer, you know, and now we're getting asked to tackle issues that will benefit businesses, and that's great. But, you know, like I said, I've been working for free for all those years, and you know, yep. it's, you know, how far can I go? I don't, I don't know. I hear you. I mean, and so while while the battle for for home brewing in Mississippi is has come to an end, but you know, home brewing is you know just beginning. One one of the links in our show notes, I think it's the second one down, is talking about Alabama, and Alabama, as we talked about in the same episode, is the it's the only state now that can't home legally homebrew. So it says uh, the Alabama's Brewers Guild is pleased to announce that the their house bill. House, five, House Bill 530 has been introduced in Alabama uh, and is expected to receive a hearing this Wednesday, which is uh, April 17th. So uh, here's here's to hoping for a better uh, outcome for them as well. Absolutely. I'm pulling for them because that's, that's my home state. That's where I grew up and raised and went to college. And uh, in, in South Alabama is where I'm actually from, and uh, I'm pulling for them too. Awesome. Well, uh, we're, we're going to keep on keep on pressing on with, with some of this news here. Uh, I'm, I'm going to hop around the show notes, not in any any kind of order, because I want to. There's there's a bunch of stuff to talk about, but uh, and then one I want to wait for Carla for if she hops on. So we have uh, there's a link in there called Jim Jim Cook weighs in on hot bombs. I thought this was pretty interesting, uh, by Gary Zan of of the Boston Globe, and uh, if you if you check that out, it's uh, it's it's both a story about Mystic Brewing, which uh, we haven't we haven't had him on the show yet. I hope to. Mm -hmm. Beers are good. 
Um, and <laughs> beers, are, beers are good, but I'll wait. I'll I'll, 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 I'll wait to brag about it till he's on. But uh, no, and then it talks about Jim Cook, and there's a there's a funny quote halfway down um, that he's interviewing him. Uh, let's see. Gary asked Cook what he thought of. Uh, uh, well, I'll start, I'll start earlier. He says uh, Cook, in a particular, has in particular has a problem with hot bombs, the big boozy hundred plus IBU beers that have been on on vogue in recent years. I asked Cook what he thought about Alchemist's Heady Topper and other massive IPAs. Uh, in part of the interview that didn't make the paper, Cook said there there are big IPAs. There's hundred of them. Are they new or interesting? Not really. I mean, they're good, but there's nothing I'm going to learn from tasting that. There's not a huge set of skills to make an 80 an IBU beer. Hmm. Hmm. Pretty. Uh, yeah, he goes on later saying like there's like 800 like double IPAs on the shelf right now, and there's probably 100 really good ones, and that's probably accurate. I mean, there's a lot of double yeah. IPAs out there that are unbalanced messes right now. It's yeah. just. I mean, it's the same argument Garrett Oliver made a few years ago about extreme beers. You throw five pounds of hops in every uh, every batch, doesn't you kind of hides everything else that's going in the beer. So I mean, it's not a new argument. No, I'm, I'm just bringing new light to it. You know what I'm saying? No. No one's getting upset. Yeah, yeah, no one's getting upset. A little sweaty. Look out. Well, isn't the, isn't the Norm beer a big hot bomb? Oh, no, the Norm beer is a coconut bomb. <laughs> I'm looking for the IBUs of this camp dog right now. Anyone, anyone know? I think I read it's like 70, 75. I can't remember though for sure. Yeah, I, I can't. Uh, I can't find it. Obviously, Beer Advocate can't help me out. They only do the ABVs. But uh, anyway, <laughs> classic uh, Beer Advocate. But uh, Craig, are you, Craig, are you a big uh, hot bomb, hot bomb fan? Or I, do, I do love some hoppy beers, but you know, when you get in the ones um, that literally say they'll wreck your palate. And, yeah, I just got to remember to do those last in the evening or, the, you know, but I, in general, I do love them, but yes, they can get a little out of hand and, and you know, kill the rest of the evening. Yeah. Order. Was it, there's one called Palette Record. Who makes that? Is that... Um, Flash. Yeah. And I'm like, you read that and it's like, well, that, that, like, like Craig said, that's the last one of the night, <laughs> it, you yeah. know. <laughs> I, love, I love hot bombs, but yeah. I, I think a lot of breweries sacrifice any sense of balance just to come out with the hoppiest beer oh, without yeah. even taking into consideration to taste into consider consideration sometimes. I, I mean, I don't mind how hoppy or bitter a beer is as long as there's some kind of balance to it. Got to be balanced. Sean, hop bomb fan? Lo loving the hops? I mean, look at your hat for God's sake. <laughs> uh, I think it depends on the day. Yeah. This morning I was I was drinking uh, milk stouts, Irish stouts. Ooh. That's yeah. a, that's good. That's a Wait, morning beer. Did, did you uh, did you get a chance to go to the craft the craft place in Fenway? Like uh, the, the craft beer uh, stop in Fenway? No, the 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 Fenway was so jam packed. And yeah. The lines are just really ridiculously long, but I, I was able to make it over to the uh, Harpoon my, uh, beer hall this morning. Damn it! How is it? Awesome. <sighs> Some god me, you me. Let's go. It <laughs> is amazing. <laughs> All right, I gotta go. I gotta go. So it, was it? Was it? Uh, what time did you get there? Because the game started at eleven. It was a. It was a, uh, a. An event that was on there beforehand. So it was a private tour for you. Yeah. Oh, I Not see. Me. Oh, okay. It was, yeah. It was for uh, some other people. And I just happened to join along. Just rolling out the red carpet. Um, let's see. So hot bombs. Cook says negatory. Now we're going on to oh, Carla's going to wait for that one too. Carla's contributing a lot this week, and if she, if she doesn't show up, we'll move these on to next week. But, uh, Norm, you sent us a link. Do you, you want to talk about the top 50 craft breweries? You got a chance? No, I, yeah, I took a look at it. I just saw Brewers Association sent it out uh, last week. I kind of found it interesting. There was uh, four breweries from New England, if I remember correctly, off the top of my head, because I uh, can't find the link for some reason. Uh, so check the show notes. What the f I know. What the f <laughs> what I the thought f I had the show notes open. That's what I, my, I don't. Yeah. But anyway, Sam Adams was on there, Harpoon, Long Trail. And I think one more. Uh, Allagash was on the list too. Yeah, yeah. Just, there's a lot of uh, New England breweries. Number well, yeah. breweries around the country. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get the last year's list to compare them side by side. I got busy at work today, but that yeah. I was wondering how some breweries had jumped around in the last year. Yeah, I mean, uh, what we got? So we'll do, we'll do top ten right now, and um, we got Boston Beer Company, number one, Sierra Nevada. 
followed by New Belgium, the Gambrinus. Ever heard Bear of that? Texas. Okay. Um, D- Deschutes. We have Lagunitas, Bells, which Norm is tasting. Uh, we yeah. have uh, Matt Brewing Company, also known as FX Matt, uh, that does a lot of. Uh, Saranac Brands. Saranac Brands. Club. Yeah. Uh, and then I think Harpoon. Lagunitas is the one that made the big jump into the top ten from last year. And I, th- I think it, we, if Chicago goes goes to plan, they should rise a little more, right? Hell, I mean, all, all the all the Asheville ones that, that are going to be there. And I know Lagunitas is going to Chicago. And I'm I'm kind of surprised to see uh, the shoots up so high too because they're they're not are they huge I don't think so are they apparently yeah well, I mean yeah I mean if the numbers show <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I guess you can't debate the facts but yeah um, just if you're wondering about Graham, uh, Gambrinus the breweries they do they do Trumer Pills and they do like Shinerbach all the Shiner beers in Bridgeport all right the Shiner is huge out in uh, Texas, if I if I remember reading correctly. Oh, Shinerbach, yeah, get in there. Yeah, it also says importers of Grupo Modelo and Moosehead. Oh, and Spotzel. 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 Watch your, I, I, I tell you to watch your mouth in this podcast, Sean. You continue to defy me. Yeah. Hey. You swear one more time, dude. You're you're out of here. Come on, goddamn here. piece of Spotzel. Yeah. <laughs> you fucking piece Spotzel. Spotzel. <laughs> you Spotzel. And then we got one more. We got we got some more. Uh, Oh damn it! I had I had two of the same article on there, but uh, Norm supplied another one. Foolproof. Oh yeah, foolproof. I just wrote about him last week. Uh, the their brewer is um, Demas Olson. He was the former brewer of the Penichek Brewing Company in New Hampshire that went out of business a few years ago after he left. He's a fabulous brewer. I uh, loved his beers, and he and his partner opened up the new brewery down in Pawtucket, Rhode Island. And they just opened up three months ago, and they're already they had to order tanks because they couldn't even keep the Rhode Island uh, market uh, fully stocked. And now they're expanding to Massachusetts, so they're doubling capacity, so they can do that. Awesome. Get the link right there in the show notes. Um, yeah, how, so, what, what are the big breweries in Rhode Island that, that I'm that I can't think of right now? Gansett. Coastal Extreme. Gansett, right? Anyway. Coastal yeah. Extreme. And okay. we, but Gantt is actually based, I mean, they brew in New York still. Coast, okay. New, like Newport, where Coastal Extreme does the Newport stuff. Gotcha. Uh, yep. Grace Sale just opened recently. Okay. Uh, there's one other I'm drawing. Actually, those I think are the only ones right now. There's a couple brew pubs also. Uh, Union well, Brew yeah, House. Like Trinity. Is, yeah, Union Brew House is owned by uh, the John Harvard's chain. Um, cool. So there's not much so, down uh, there. And, uh, yeah, not yet. No, I mean, I, I can't imagine it's such a small state, right? So it's got to be. Well, that's, yeah. that's what I was talking to Moss. He was saying like, people are starved for like locally brewed beer there. Like the day they're open, they have lines every day coming in to buy their cans just because people want something good and local brewed, and it's just not that many options. Right. Oh boy. Um. So we're gonna come up here next. So Carla brought this up. Uh, I think I don't even know if this was po- this is a year ago. So this wasn't even on the podcast. But the one of the first uh, Kickstarter breweries is now uh, just turned one years old, and she had po- she had a post about it maybe um, probably about a year ago. Uh, but the Community Beer Works turns one years old, one year old, and uh, if you if it's on the twentieth, and uh, I thought it was just this is a pretty cool thing because K- Kickstarter was just starting to get its feet back then, and uh, it's it's pretty cool to see that there's a still around because it's a Kickstarter project. And, uh, and and be pouring great beers from, from what I can hear. And, and uh, Community yeah. Beer Works is out of Buffalo, New York. Yeah. It's funny. I think that brewery, uh, brewery in the uh, Maine, Strong Brewing Company, that was trying to do uh, Kickstarter. I think they reached their goal. Oh, did I they? Think I, I'm pretty sure I read it from Carla's uh, Facebook. Find out. It's called Strong Brewing. I'm I'm looking it up right now. Yeah, they're in Maine. They they weren't seeking the full money to open a brewery. They're seeking like. Seventy-five or eighty-five hundred dollars for specific things. I'm pretty sure it was like seventy-five hundred bucks. It was very, yeah. very low. Strong brew. Enter. Strong brew. Found it. Bam Got it. And one hundred and five percent pledge seven thousand nine hundred and five dollars of a seventy-five hundred dollar goal. With <laughs> Twenty hours to go. So. One hundred fifty yeah. backers too. That's a sizable amount per backer. Yeah, I'm, I mean, Kickstarter is like pay for the rest of my oil bill for the rest of the year. <laughs> yeah, we'll call it Norm's beer fund, but all the money just goes to oil to, to heat the house. Right. Um, yeah, 
I, I, you get your I, I, friends the Venezuelans here, but oil. <laughs> Kind of brings up a kind of kind of brings up a, a a bigger conversation about Kickstarter. I I'm not personally. I mean, I get it, but my problem with Kickstarter is I don't think people that that fund projects get it. So there there's there's this thing in in the tech world like there's a small a small gaming thing uh, that that they call it a gaming system, and they're asking people to back it, and those that back it will receive beta units and, and things like that. But people think that they're buying a product. What people need to know about Kickstarter is it's not promising anything. First of all, and and you're, you're funding this project, so you might not get your money back, and you can't complain about it because it's clearly written in the rules. You're just mm -hmm. you're funding a project that might not succeed. Yeah, I don't know. So that's why you go low. You go like for like the t-shirt, you know, option like that they give you. Like, put, give them like thirty bucks, you get a t-shirt and like a handshake, and you're yeah. like, all right, cool. Just want to use a, like a virtual handshake. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank it's you. funny. I just got an email the other day from someone trying asking me to put their my kick their Kickstarter on my blog. It was these. This guy is building these really like what he describes as fine art turtle sculptures. <laughs> that was me, Norm. Don't say that. That was me. But <laughs> they were really nice, small turtle sculptures that are also uh, bottle openers. I'm like, oh, that's cool. I'd like to have one of those. Damn and it. I looked at the price of how much he's going to be selling them for, like 150 to 200 dollars each. Oh, screw that's, that. There's not one person in the world who's going to spend 150 dollars. On a bottle opener. They better, be live, like, I, they better be live turtles. Yeah, you could buy a turtle and like glue a bottle opener to the belly. And yeah. Then just... So like, I just couldn't. I couldn't bring myself to put it on my. I couldn't bring oh. myself to blog about it because I can't imagine that being a good value for anyone. Damn it. Like they I'm, had this I'm, thing. If you post it, like if you, if you uh, pledge three hundred dollars, you got all three of them because they, they're all th there's three different ones all named after the different uh, three musketeers. Okay, damn it, Norm. I, I'm giving the guy a free promotion right now. I found it. It's right. It was a, you, you type turtle. It's the first thing. Bronze turtle beer bottle openers. <laughs> if they're like twenty, twenty-five bucks, I'd buy one. They're really good. They're really. Whoa! For a hundred. Really I've got about a hundred bottle openers that I've picked up from Beer Fest over the years. And yeah, you're that's good. My, my you're good. Point. I don't need any more. Yeah, right. Exactly. This isn't the point. But get this. Tape though. it to a turtle. Yeah, hey, all, all I'm saying is for two hundred seventy bucks, you. It says six backers, price two seventy. You are pre-ordering and will receive all three bronze. They're actually pretty cool oh. looking. They're pretty cool yeah. looking though. Yeah, yeah, but this guy's getting funded though. I mean, like it's like, come on, dude, you're making turtles. But, well, that, it's right. weird though. That, that's in, if you aim low, like Mike said, you do fine. But this guy aimed high, and he only had eighteen backers, and he's good. Like he yeah. he, he wanted eight hundred fifty bucks, and he got three three Gs. Yeah, yeah. he's like, good. Like I said, they're really nice and they're really well done. If they're twenty, twenty-five bucks, I can see people buying them. But I think it's uh, old price is one hundred fifty bucks. I think it's I think it's awesome that this podcast has evolved into us talking about bronze turtle bottle openers. <laughs> like I mean, like thirty podcasts ago, I was really hoping it would go this way, and we're here. We made it. <laughs> Sorry, my life, my life no, is it's true. <laughs> we made it, guys. We did it. We did it. We did. We had our first turtle conversation. I hope that guy that makes them is listening right now and he's like, those sons of bitches. I'll that's show what, them. That's why I know how heavy this damn thing is. I mean, we're talking we're talking heft. All I know is I got the only bottle opener I ever need for my best man gift yes. at a certain host's wedding, and I don't need any more. So. <laughs> yep. It's, it's really made, out of a, uh, made out of a railroad spike. Don't forget it. Right. Take that, turtle. Take take that, and that was and that's a little place called. Uh, what the hell is that place called? Not Kickstarter, but the other crafty Etsy. Etsy. Hey Etsy. Hey but uh, I digress. Let's move on to another another thing, and you, you can check out the. I'm gonna put a link in the damn show notes for the bronze turtles, and if you guys want to back it, let me know and buy me and, one. And maybe they'll name one after you. Yeah. <laughs> I hope they make a norm turtle. Exactly. <laughs> put a big beard. So what do we got going on to make sure it's weird? Oh god, it's like what's the hair made out of? You don't want to know. <laughs> made of real norm hair. Watch yeah. out for that snapper. Norm well, hair. Yeah. Norm hair from where? Hello. You know. Shipyard. Sean, have you seen this article yet? Uh, the water one. Yes. I I yeah I read it. Well, I read it tonight. Yeah, me too. I I, I haven't got much to do. But, I mean, the uh, we, we talked about this topic. Uh, a couple shows ago. Did we? Yeah, because it was brought up that we knew, we'd heard that they were um, going back and forth about the the water fees. Um, oh. 
Yeah, we, we talked about it a couple episodes ago, I think, just randomly. I think probably Carla brought it up because I think she heard about it. I mean, long story short, what we got going on here, Shipyard Brewing to pay Portland $300,000 to settle sewer fees. Um, the city and the brewing company have been working for four months with the arbitrator uh, and attorney, uh, blah, 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 blah. The error, which an investigation last year determined was caused by miscommunication and not wrongdoing, cost the city of Portland nearly $1.5 million over a 15-year period. So, read the article there, but... Uh, Beer news, a lot of money involved. I figured I'd toss it out there. Sean, big shipyard fan. Norm, huge shipyard fan. <laughs> oh, shipyard pumpkin head. <laughs> hey, oh, for the win. Wait. It's coming out next week. I can't even say that one with a straight face. Oh, come on, Normie. Big fan. Frank, have you ever had a uh, have you ever had a shipyard pumpkin head? Uh, yes, I, I have. We actually used to have shipyard distributed here up until about a year ago, and then they just I, I can't remember, but. Yes, I've, I've bootlegged the pumpkin in the Mississippi. Nice. Nice. Can I ask Craig just one quick question I meant to ask him? Oh, no, sure. Yeah, please. It, Craig is... Craig I know it's a little off topic. But yeah. I was just curious that since the ABV uh, limit was lifted, have you seen an increase to uh, breweries that are showing interest in opening in uh, Mississippi or any other breweries that have well, opened since then? Uh, yeah, well, and in, 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 I'd said earlier... Um, tw 12 months ago, a year ago, this time we had one brewery and one brew pub. The brewery, of course, was Lazy Magnolia, and the brew pub was a place called Keg and Barrel, which is probably our best beer bar in the state down in Hattiesburg. And uh, they actually have stopped doing a brew pub, and they're actually fixing to open a production brewery. They actually already have. They started brewing about two weeks ago, and we should see their beers here in Jackson <clears throat> in the next few weeks. But um, at you know, so a year ago we had one brewery, and now we're on the verge of five. And 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 I heard about a six one today up in North Mississippi, that I think is contract brewing. I don't have all the details yet, but to go from one to six in less than a year is pretty pretty damn cool. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. Sorry, I didn't mean to get off topic. I just meant to no. ask that earlier, and when he mentioned <laughs> shipyard pulling out, it reminded me I wanted to ask. No, so, we, 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 you got a special guest in the house. I mean, I, I'd, I'd rather, I'd rather, you know, ask him questions than, than talk about, you know, beer news because this guy single-handedly changed beer laws in the state. We're sitting here yapping about it. We got the guy on the show. May as well ask some questions. Yeah. <laughs> well, Here's then I'll ask a follow-up question. Has Lazy Magnolia done any beers now that they couldn't do before? Uh, yes, absolutely. Oh. And they had a big promotion. I don't know if you've heard of Timber Beast. And uh, they, oh, cat's name. they, the law went into effect at midnight. They had actually pre-brewed the beer, but they had a big, big party at midnight at the brewery where they actually bottled the beer and capped it and made it, okay, now this beer is legal. And that was their first high gravity beer. And it's actually a fantastic, it's IPA, very hoppy. Uh, it, it's a good one. And if you very hoppy beer, IPA. Very, uh, it's, uh, it, it's a good one. Um, but yeah, they've, uh, I think that's our only high gravity to this point, but they've got some, oh, they have done a, uh, a, uh, uh, kind of a barrel age thing too. Oh, cool. uh, you know, going back to not only now are we growing with breweries, but also interest from other breweries that we never could get before, you know, since July, we've had Magic Hat come into the state. Oh, cool. and, uh, uh on last Thursday, we had a Chimay launch party. Oh, wow. And now we've got Chimay, and we've also got all the uh, uh, the Belgian beers that, uh, it, well, let me back up. The day that that party was planned, that day, uh, Cezanne DuPont landed in the distributor here in town. So it was kind of a, even though it was planned for Chimay, it became a dual celebration. So we also got all the uh, additional Belgian beers that come in with the import with Cezanne DuPont, and, and that's huge. You know, that's something we've never had. Yeah. And to have those beers, and, you know, and we're fixing to, I've got a Shapley lunch party tomorrow. Nice. And Green Flash is coming within the next Oof. or so, I think. God, that's exciting. It's a Christmas yeah. dream. Yeah. Yeah. It's like yeah. rolling in. Hey, listen, Black breweries, Friday. these are breweries that, like, I take for granted I can get at, like, I know. the other liquor stores. And I just, Norman and I... No, but, I, mean, I feel so like it's just great that you finally get these. Like I said, these are beers that like I always thought 
like, you know, just everyone had had access to. It never entered my mind that you had to go through these type of hurdles to get these breweries. I know. We walk into ours and we're like, oh, God, this is amazing. But yeah. we take it for granted. You're absolutely right. <laughs> there was a, uh, before we changed it, there was a lot of bootleggers in the state. And I don't know if, you know, of you guys that were in Portland, when I gave that presentation, I showed that map of where Mississippians had to go to get their good craft yep. beer. You know, it was not uncommon for us to, you know, just take day trips and go out of state and bring back a couple hundred dollars worth of beer in the trunk. I mean, that's, that's kind of like New Hampshire now. I Did mean, you drive I, around the General Lee? I was looking for a black Trans Am, you know, the day the law went into effect. Because, uh, literally, uh, a beta. You know, of course, a beta, we've had a beta forever, but we couldn't get, of course, you know, uh, oh shoot, you know, their higher, higher gravity stuff. But yeah. they had a uh, tractor trailer truck loaded and literally waiting to cross the line. Oh. You know, when the law went into effect, and I was like, God, I gotta, I gotta find a black Trans Am. That is so <laughs> awesome. You know, but I couldn't, I couldn't find one. You need a black Trans Am, and then you need two ramps on either side of that truck. So, right. like, freaking just, and then freeze frame right at the top, and just right. go over it. Like a Shriner parade, just, like, right up and over it, and just, like... Well, that's, that's, that's gonna be like... If I could find out where that truck, when it would, exactly it would leave, I'd meet it at the state line and just escort it. <laughs> the, tr <laughs> the truck's just revving its engine on the state line, and just burns out as soon as, like, it's a go! So, it's I like, picture I just picture a guy running out onto the court steps, or like onto the state steps, being like, "It passed, it passed," and then just like people just throwing like <laughs> papers up in the air. I just, pic I just picture Craig going there. Shame at last. <laughs> <laughs> that's the name of the, that's the name of the show right there. Yeah, Shame at last. last. <laughs> so what if? Can you tell us a little about so you, these launch parties? Shame at last. Is it like a tap takeover? Is it a is well, it a uh, night or how do you guys uh, do you guys like doing uh, you know all that stuff was in bottles at this time we'll, we'll get kegs later uh so it was just you know we, we picked one bar in town and and gave them first dibs to to sell it and uh, had the distributor drop it off and chilled it and you know everybody we invited everybody and a couple of us have first shot of having a legal chamay in you know in mississippi and uh, you know, of course, Shaffley uh, came into town. And, and one thing I want to mention, if y'all, if you don't know if y'all know the Crafting a Nation documentary movie that's uh, fixing to come out, well, Saturday, Jackson, Mississippi, had the world premiere of this craft beer movie, and, and y'all are going to start to hear a lot about it. Awesome. And Shaffley was featured in it, and Shaffley was due to arrive to actually today physically in the state, but we pushed because they were featured in it. We got them in a little early. And we had a, uh, 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 it's actually a film festival here in town, a four-day film festival. And we sponsored a, uh, the reception that was a few hours before the documentary. And so we had Chimay and Lazy Mag and Abita, Nola Bruin, and, and, and poured those beers. And so it was people's first, you know, legal uh, Shaffley beers that they got to have. Wow. And so tomorrow we're doing uh, two launch events tomorrow evening, one five to seven and one seven to nine. That's awesome. I'm excited about tomorrow evening. And no sleep till Brooklyn. That's right. I, I, I can only imagine, like, going back to... I always love one of the Beastie Boys reference. Oh, boy. Too soon. But uh, I, I, I can, going back to that, that'll be the truck, I can only imagine looking like Black Friday at Toys R Us when those doors open on that truck. Like, just kid, it's kids. Just people running towards that, <laughs> running towards that truck. <laughs> but, uh, Give me the Turbo Doll. <laughs> the Turbo Doll. Speaking of Turbo Doll, we got Carla Companion, Beer Howdy. Babe. How are you? Howdy. Hey, Carla. Look at this. We got a packed house here. The Mississippi of the North. <laughs> Standing room only. This is great. And we were just about to talk about something, but uh, we lost Mike, so we kicked him out. Oops, but, sorry. Uh, <laughs> Piper down. Piper down. But uh, what else we got going on? I, I, I'll, let, I'll let Carla set up before we start talking about actually one of her articles. I saved best for last here on the show. I, I did put a video up there. I was talking about earlier before the show started how uh, I went into Tully's, which is a, a beer store up in, uh, in Wells, Maine, and I was kind of taken back by all the, the, the beer cans I saw at this craft beer place. I remember going last year and see, seeing the cans now, but I saw a new can. It was the, uh, the Year of the Dog. A year of the dog, stupid. Year of the snake dog IPA from Flying Dog. 
and uh, I, I have never had that beer or the can, but I, I, I saw that, and then I look up, and just a whole fridge of cans. So that, that's just a, the movement's begun, folks. It's oh, crazy. yeah. At, at least up here. I mean, I, I'm drinking out of a can right now. So is Craig. So is uh, yeah. Sean, but out of a glass. Oh, nice. Torpado. That's actually my second beer. Um, I had I had an opera hop while I was on the phone. So. Nice. Nice. <laughs> They, I saw the Dogfish came out with one with, with, with Great Must, was it called? Yeah, Dog Great Head Must. So, I'm sorry, go ahead, Norm. I'm sorry, I was just saying a Dogfish had 61-minute IPA. Yep. All right. <laughs> I have not had that one yet, but I did have a Noble Rot, which is a bunch of, like, fermented icky grapes, and that was really tasty. <laughs> nice. I, I just picked up... I really up... like 61. I had it at the Extreme Beer Fest a couple weeks ago. Nice. Has, has anyone had the Positive Contact yet? By... Yeah, I had it last year. Yeah, I had that, that was good. I have the record album that came with it. That was fun, too. Oh, nice. So I yeah. wonder if I, what I got was old. It should be fresh, though, I hope. <laughs> no, I think it was only brewed once. Yeah. I think... No way. Usually just... they are. <laughs> Wait, where was I? Oh, it was only a Jeff from Slumber one that I had a bottle that was like eight months old. Right. right. Like, what the hell? Spring seasonal. See, that's a problem. That's the problem with New Hampshire is like, oh, he's got a fresh case. Well, the case itself is fresh because you haven't opened it yet, but the freaking beer was brewed three years ago. Right. <laughs> Class in New Hampshire. But uh, another Carlo. <laughs> Carlo, what's going on? <laughs> Oh, not much. Uh, sorry, I've uh, been feeling wedding planning calls uh, for the evening, so I, I got home and then I got immediate calls that I had to take. So, um, no yeah, no, it's good. I actually picked a date and a venue. Yay! And they uh, don't care what I bring for beer. Yay! What? Uh, nice. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I got around the whole. Uh, you know, you have to use our beer person, and you can choose from three beers that we have on tap. Crap. So right. I really. I'm kind of relieved. It's it's uh it's a good thing. Um, awesome. Yeah. Well, we got uh we, we said the best for last, as I said. Um, the beer babe wrote an article in the Portland Press Herald about about the the freedom to fill. And yeah. uh, would you, would you mind giving us a little background about that? Because that that's, sure. that's pretty awesome. Uh, so last year, uh, main beer, um, main breweries, and everybody got the ability to actually sell growlers at at um at other venues other than um, just at the brewery. There's a couple of places they can do that. What they're looking for now is to be able to have like growler filling stations at retail stores. So places like Beer Cellar, RSVP, Tully's could have um, you know kegs that they could then uh, fill into growlers for customers that wouldn't have to be on premise at the place that it was actually brewed or at a brew pub. Um, so there's a lot of breweries in Maine that do stuff in growlers but they're on you know, you have to go to them to get it, um, yep. and especially in Maine, there's only so many breweries that are near, for, for that lack of a better term, populated areas. Uh, so you either have to take kind of a long, you know, kind of beer day trip up to where you would want to get your beer, or you're kind of out of luck. Um, there are many Maine breweries that don't bottle, they don't can, that's the only way you can get their beer is to go see them. Um, and this bill, um, which basically just allows for the retail um, locations to pour into sealed refillable containers, i.e. growlers, um, <laughs> would actually let them have more uh, freedom to do that. Um, so I can't see anything that's a downside of this bill at all. Uh, Greg from Beer Cellar um, and a couple people up in Bangor were the ones that kind of pushed for this in the first place. Yep. And they're looking for um, uh, some support. Um, and for my article that I, we linked to in the show notes, <coughs> I talked to Tiffany from uh, 99 Bottles about what it's like at their place um, and what kind of things that they do with their growler filling station in Washington State. Um, I've been to a few in New York. They're just really cool. Um, there's a lot of details that still need to be ironed out, but I just think it's a really good thing for Maine beer tourists that come into town. You know, oh, here, I'm here for the week. I want to try this, that, and the other, and I don't want to go all the way up to, you know, Belfast or wherever to get it. God, that'd be awesome. The, um, is the Brewers Guild behind it? You know, I don't know, but I know there's a lot of support from the retail industry, at least. Um, but the brewers that I have heard comment from are also behind it, but I don't know. I haven't heard an official statement from the Guild. I remember, so, I can't remember where I read this. It was a couple of years ago when some other state was thinking about doing it. And don't get me wrong, I am actually full for growlers and stores and everything, but 
there was some a few brewers who expressed concern that people were going to bring in uh, growlers that weren't officially like totally clean, like they're supposed to be. Right. They're going to get it filled, and, and it's going to be contaminated, and they're going to have bad reviews on like right. beer and rape right beer and everything like that. And, that's, and that is some brewers is, are actually against it because of that. And that's one of the concerns: is it takes the control out of their hands, right? So you've got two things that could possibly go wrong. First, somebody brings in a growler that's full of crap. Um, you know, and hopefully the retailer would be smart enough to only, uh, and when I talk to Tiffany, basically they, they demand that the, the things be clean. But, but that's one thing that's out of their hands, right, as yeah. a brewer. The second is if you've got a retail location that's someplace like a grocery store or a gas station, they're not beer special people, they might not really be as attentive about cleaning lines, um, you know, keeping stuff sanitary, you know, kind of all that care that people know need to go into the beer, but maybe these, you know, non-beer places wouldn't know necessarily, so that you get that risk. What if they get something that's infected or dirty, you know, and then yeah, it kind like of backfires on them. Yeah, like but, one week they have an imperial stout, and the following week they have a half of ice Right, or or they put one sour beer in there, and then everything tastes like Britannomyces afterwards. You know, there there are risks, um, and I think that um, what I'm seeing and hearing from the beer community, at least in Maine, is that there's so much attention to that type of detail in the places that want this. You know, beer seller is going to be, you know, super responsible about it. You know, so are, you know, a couple of the other places that are really pushing for it. That I'm hoping that there'll be enough kind of people raising a flag when it's wrong, um, that it'll kind of self-police. Now, there aren't any, there is not any text in this law that has says anything about how they're cleaned, what they need to be, how the growlers need to be labeled, whether they can be any growlers or whatever. It says nothing about that at all. So there's a lot of, there's some question marks, right? Because that leaves a lot to be, you know, determined. But maybe that something that if it becomes a problem, they, you know, add some additional regulation. Oh, and by the way, it has to be inspected by a so-and-so dude once a year or something. I don't know. You know, like there, right. there are ways that they can, they can get around that. But I just think that they... So it's in so many states, and it's doing well. You know yeah. that I do you know? Do you know any of the stipulations behind this? Is it is it only a, uh, a what they refer to as an off-premise license that would allow it, meaning that it would only be uh, either a beer store or something that was not a restaurant selling food? Correct. It is. It is in the verbiage. It is off-premise license. Yeah. Um, so, they, so some of your pushback right there will be people that. Our restaurants and say if they can do it over at that store, why can't I do it? I mean, that's part of the negative. But they yep. can get it on tap at the restaurant, so I guess that's what. Mm. That's, I mean, it's. But they'll be does, but they're going to say that I'm losing, I'm losing potentially losing a money or a market that I've already had. Mm. So in the, well, that's the other, I haven't heard yet. So that's that's an interesting one. The, it, other, the other pushback that I that I foresee will be, um, I predict some of the breweries will say not having so depend upon what vessel the beer is poured in so say for example and it's just because the first I was first beer I saw in, in the chat oxbow say that it was an oxbow growler but I got a, a shipyard beer in it for mm -hmm. example I take that oxbow growler to a party I'm not standing there and Brian opens it up and says wow this oxbow beer is terrible right. and or I really love okay. it, and it goes out to go seek and get that beer, right. and it's not the beer of what right. it's labeled. When so I that, when I talked, the only the only response I have to that is when I talked to Tiffany uh, at Ninety Nine Bottles. What they do is when they fill it, they actually attach a tag that has the name of the, kind of like Hill Farm said does. They yeah. It's got the name of the beer, the ABV, the date it was filled, you know, any pertinent information that they have. So that you can bring whatever vessel you want. You're not, ch you know, I don't have to have a beer cellar growler. I could have whatever growler I've got here as long as it's clean, but then they relabel it kind of for you. And that is not something that's in their regulations, but that's what they do. So, you know, maybe that's their way of answering that. And I know it's removable and all that stuff, but I think, you know, it, I think the retail locations, especially the ones that give a shit about beer, might be able to figure out, you know, some kind of solution for that problem. But, but I can see that, you know, like I don't want to be, you know, have it as as a brewer. You know, my my name on beer that you know isn't mine. <laughs> <You Right. know? laughs> but, but that's also going to be up to store policy. You know, maybe the store requires you to put it in their route. I don't know. 
Um, most of the most of the breweries, all of the breweries, I don't know. Most of the breweries of Maine require you to bring the same your their growler back. You know, Oxbow beer is filled in Oxbow growlers. Rising Tide beer is filled in Rising Tide growlers, which to me yeah. is mildly annoying because I don't want twenty different growlers. Um, but I see why they do it. Um, sure. different growlers at my house right now. What? They, that's why I have fourteen different empty growlers at my house right now because. Birmingham, I mean Massachusetts. You have to have the growl from the now, right. I'll, I'll I'll toss a wrench in the works, uh, and I, I don't know if this is part of the bill or not. And if you had mentioned it already, but are there main breweries that sell growlers at stores already? No. So th th that's a completely different thing, not even part of this. Oh, 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 oh I know what you mean. Um, yes, so, that's allowed actually. So like, okay, Seller sells field. Free packaged growlers from Freeport Brewing Company, for example. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. So that is okay, but the but the difference is that it's a it's a refillable. You bring it in, and I fill it from a keg. Right. Um, but you but you buy it at the store filled at a store. Right. right. Okay. You can do that, although that's very rare around here, and I don't know if it's just because they don't want their beer on a shelf right. too long. Yeah. You know. Carla, do you know if the law has any restrictions of where the beer is produced? Of whether or not it could be sold, if they if they propose anything like that, for example, like this law would go effect to maybe only main breweries. Oh, um, it is not specific in the wording. Okay. Um, so I think the focus would be mostly on local beer, but it could be any beer from a keg that is legal to be distributed in Maine. In Maine. So if you have a keg of it, you can make it into a growler pour. So. Um, so it's not restricted to Maine. So theoretically, they could have a keg of, you know, Founders KBS, and you could. Okay. Yeah, if I was, I mean, if I was, if I had a brewery in Maine, there'd be some things I would, I would promote that because, um, you're, I mean, it's local fresh. That's what you're promoting. That thing, I mean, that would be my, that would be my push. And the states that I've seen it in, they're, they're, they're pouring their own state stuff. Yeah, I just um, don't think they could legally exclude breweries from outside the state no. to do it. No, and yeah, and I and I think um, even, and when I talked to Ninety Nine Bottles again, they they said that they had um, mostly local, but one or two away from away. So um, I just I would be really excited if it drew down some of the beer that's up in the mid upper parts of Maine that people don't visit. Right. Well, that yeah, that's a great example, Marshall Wharf. Um, so that more people could be exposed to the beer than the little towns that they end up, you know, kind of being in. Oh, yeah. And I think that that um, little punch in demand, both on the beer store side and the brewer side, could actually be really good. Um, you know, because it, and it also saves them the trouble of really having to, you know, put a lot of effort into deciding, oh, well, do I want a bottle? Do I want to distribute? Well, I can reach more people. If I get a couple of you know stores down in Portland and, and Lewiston and Auburn and Augusta to you know pour my beer, yeah. it's, it's a lot less effort. So, I mean, there's definitely bigger issues on the table. So let let them pour growlers. There's bigger issues on the table. So right. let, let, let the pour pour growlers, will you? <laughs> <laughs> let there be light. Yeah. Only, but you know, don't see it through the growler. I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> That 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 was going nowhere, yeah. but uh, and, and just one last note on that though. Sure. There is a a brewery in Mass that traditionally had growlers forever and a day, and they disbanded it of the growler sales about a year ago. Which one? Uh, uh, Ipswich. <laughs> uh, Did you? Yeah, that or you... Uh, Ipswich. No, I was I wasn't. The, the reason why they stopped doing it was because a lot of the times their growlers came back from retail very dirty, using it as ashtrays and. And that was that was part of the reason of, yeah. of, of yeah. You know, it wasn't wasn't the whole thing. So, I mean, the, the natural tendency is not that consumers, everybody keeps them clean. I guess that's. Oh yeah, of, you know, and uh, and I I won't go into gross detail, but uh, Tiffany also told me that's her biggest problem is to get people to bring them in clean. And they're like, no, no, it's fine, just fill it anyway. And she's like, no, no, there's like mold in it. I'm not uh, mold. Quick... I'm not Sean. going to the dust bunny. It's it's truth. Like, I'm not filling it with the shit. And they're like, no, no, it's fine. And she's like, she's re she has to refuse people that just, and their place is small enough, and they don't have like running water, or whatever, to to not have like a cleaner station there. So the new name of the show is uh, uh, Ipswich. 
<laughs> but uh, no, the uh, big shout out to Tiffany. Uh, she is actually one of the few people I follow on the Vine app. So uh, if you have iPhone and have Vine, check it out. <laughs> Yeah, Every time you uh, make a plug, we should go like a ching. Uh, yeah, yeah. Today's show is sponsored by Vine. Get on it. <laughs> Today's show is brought to you by Vine. There was and a, just a <laughs> before you move off this. There was a there was a comment that some breweries do not want their beer pouring growlers. That's true, and That's they true. won't all have to do it. There's some, but you can't. But uh, depending upon how the law is written. If you didn't want your beer in a growler and a retail store put it in a growler, you couldn't necessarily stop it. It seems like an well, easy thing. They, they, like they have to yeah, order the keg, the keg. Right. right? Stop you the can sale. Say, no. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> no growler for you. So, or no, yeah, no growler or keg for you. No but keg listen, for I think I think I think we've. I mean, so here's what we need. I need Sean and Carla in one episode just to do a debate about that. Because it's going to happen. Yeah. And That's then fine. A, and growler then, off. Growler. No, so sorry. <laughs> chug a growler. First one to win. Hey, when it goes, oh. when it goes further in the legislature or whatever, I'd be happy to spat off that. I mean, we, we imagine have, that? A growler? So, like, I, I imagine in, in less than 30 episodes, we'll be sitting here talking just like we're talking to Craig right now about changing laws. We'll be talking to Carla, who just got her fresh growler poured at Beer Cellar. And, you know, amen. Shimei at last. Right. <laughs> and, and sponsored by Vine. <laughs> saying, saying the only the only other thing I want to mention is that they, they do not have any verbiage in there about the size of the growler. None at nice. all. <laughs> Which I have a feeling may 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 come back. Should I get bringing this twelve ounce growler? Right. Right, and uh, I got a growler. All right. No, no, no. I just I got I got cellophane. I can just mm -hmm. put it over the top. It's good. Right. <laughs> Well, I guess, I mean, so th that's going to do it for this episode. Uh, we we're kind of running low on time, but I wanted to you know, have, have Carla say his piece because we saved it for her. Yep, uh, sorry to be so late. No, don't worry about it. I mean, marriage. God, God damn it. You know. Marriage. Marriage is what Brad <laughs> does together today. Okay, so, but I, I, what I forgot to, to, to do at the beginning of the show, because we, we hopped right into talking about, about Boston, but uh, I forgot to ask how everyone's week was prior to today. So, Craig, did you do anything this, pa this past week that, that's worth? So we'll do two things. Craig, did you, did you do anything last week that was awesome? And, and besides, but besides anything else, do you want to give a shout-out to anything uh, next week? Um, yeah, last week was pretty awesome. Of course, I mentioned we had uh, Shemay landed in the state, so we had a Shemay lunch party. That same day, we had Cezanne DuPont land, literally. So it was a dual party there. And then uh, Saturday, we had, and you guys will hear about it soon if you haven't seen the trailer, Crafting a Nation, the documentary. And uh, we had the world premiere right here in Little Jackson mm -hmm. at a little film fest. So we had a reception for it. We sponsored a reception, donated some beer, and uh, got to see the documentary. And it's great. I, I, re I highly recommend it. And then, of course, uh, next week we got Shapley coming in, so that's our that's our big thing coming next week. And we got a big uh, we we do we do charity work too. And uh, one of our favorite charities here in here in Jackson and in the state is the Jackson Zoo, and we've got our annual zoo brew there, and we're going to help them out. And uh, that's our big thing that's coming up uh, Friday evening. Awesome. And as you were saying that, I'm, I'm putting the, the trailer to Crafting a Nation on, on the show notes so people can see that. And it has a link to the uh, to their YouTube page and, and their website as well. Um, Mike. Mm -hmm. Jesus. <laughs> <Sorry. Sorry. laughs> I was looking at it on tap to remember what I had on uh, Friday night, one of those nights. Yeah, so uh, what's, what, 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 what was her name? Last week and, uh, <laughs> oh, boy. That's, that's a different. That's friend, that's friend Finder. That's Friend that's Finder. That's five years for him. Yeah. No, the Match.com app doesn't work on my phone anymore, so I have to get rid of it. Perfect. Uh, um, I do have a, kind of a funny story. Uh, I was at a certain establishment in, uh, in Salem on Friday night, and I couldn't see the name on the, gra on the tap, and like, I, like, I, it was like eclipsed. And I, I, I was pretty sure it was a Maybach, but I wasn't 100% sure. And I, like, I leaned real quick, and I saw that it was my buck, but I mispronounced it. I called it a Maybach by accident, and the bartender, uh, he harshly corrected me. And I was like, okay. <laughs> was like, it was the way he said it. I was like, I was like oh, I'll have the Maybach. And like, I accidentally said it wrong. He's like, it's pronounced Maybach. Oh, and boy. I was like, I can't like this shit out of you. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, Maybach. 
<laughs> but like, I'm like, I want to beat the shit out of you right now. Like that just because <laughs> it was like that one mistake like, that way you to be hope, a jerk. Right. Yeah. You hope nobody catches you. Like when you say something wrong like that, he just totally called me out on it. And I wouldn't have cared if it wasn't for the perfect stranger that was standing next to me that just went, <laughs> and just like stared at me like I was an idiot and I was like great just just give me the bot whatever it's called just give it to me like that and no tip for him but Thank it was God. delicious BBC is my bot try it oh, I love that beer yeah it's it was really really good and it's pronounced this service. it's pronounced Maybook yeah, so. it's pronounced <laughs> it's pronounced asshole bartender well done Boku <laughs> hashtag asshole bartender right Boku Okay. <laughs> big, <laughs> Richard Lewis, big fan. <laughs> but it was um, a good. It was overall, it was a good weekend. Besides anything going on this coming week that worth plugging or having some more Maybooks? Yeah, some Maybooks from Berkshire. Uh, <laughs> Berkshire. <laughs> yeah, Berkshire. Uh, no, nothing, nothing too much. Uh, had uh, I was forced to get a Bud Heavy on Friday night, and I'm sorry. Hey. To everybody, hey, you know, hey, but uh, listen, first, I literally first, looked at every first step to meeting it. I, know, I, I felt so guilty, like I was like, I'll have a little Budweiser, <laughs> just because there was literally nothing else. Like okay. all, like everything else that was decent was kicked. So I was like, well, at least that's a good sign. Yeah. Um, but uh, no, uh, nothing too much on the agenda. Uh, I'm sure it leaves the calendar wide open for fun beer things. So I'm always on the lookout. So. Sweet, uh, Norman, what's going on with you? Well, not much. Uh, on Saturday, uh, Brandon Carter, B. Carter on Twitter, uh, came over to watch some of the ultimate fights on Saturday night, and uh, we ended up having a little uh, mini stout tasting. It wasn't planned. It just He ended up bringing this barrel-aged stout from the old Hickory Brewing Company from North Carolina, so we had that, and I had just got the new uh, Stone Espresso uh, Imperial Russian Stout, which is Ooh. phenomenal. Nice. Fantastic. Uh, split a bottle of that with him, and then I grabbed my last uh, vintage KBS, and we split the last bottle I had, and it was a good little mini style tasting to watch to watch the fights with. Just a couple of dudes drinking beers, watching the fight. What's wrong with that? That's what? Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Hey, uh, Normie, was that the fight on uh, HBO? No, this was on FX. Is uh, the season? It's basically the season finale for their reality show called The Ultimate Fighter. Awesome. Uh, okay. The awesome. fighters. My contract to get uh, get a six figure contract to fight in the UFC for a year, and they had the finale live on Friday, Saturday night. It was really good fights, by the way. If you do like UFC, um, well, well, I don't really have anything easy. planned for this weekend yet. It's only Monday. Um, I'm sure. I'm sure <laughs> it's so tough to ask this question on Monday. But I know it's like. Oh. Although I have to say one other thing, I did finally break up my grill for the first time of the season. Grill from nice. Steak. Had a. Sat outside with a, my dog at my side and a leader of uh, Sam Adams' porch rocker waiting nice. for the group. So that was a good Sunday, just uh, relaxing. Well, awesome. And uh, keep up the good work on that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sean, so uh, if for those that don't follow Two Beer Guys, first of all, shame on you. Unsubscribe from the podcast and don't listen again. <laughs> Two, uh, you, you were doing some, uh, some uh, traveling with your brother, huh? I did. Uh, a, a bunch of uh, loyal uh, UMass Little Riverhawk fans went down to Pittsburgh to watch the Frozen Four. Unfortunately, we got um, we got a, a tough matchup. We're tougher than I thought, and I uh, tip, tip my hat to Yale for uh, winning the Frozen Four on Saturday night. Um, we went into overtime and lost uh, three to two, but uh, it was it was a good season. And um, I, all I can say is that there was three games for. Uh, uh, overall, from between Thursday and Saturday, and our game was the best matchup. Even number one versus number fifteen on Saturday night was a four nothing blowout. Whoa! Uh, and the and the funny thing is that it was Quinnipiac versus Yale, and um, they uh, separate. They're eight miles apart on the same street in Connecticut. Uh, one of the fans, the funniest time I saw, said, uh, um, "I drove uh, seven miles more than every other Quinnipiac fan." <laughs> so it was pretty funny, but but Pittsburgh, I'll tell you this. Uh, I'm sad to not be there this week, but I'm glad to sort of not be there this week. This week starts Pittsburgh Beer Week. Oh, there are over 250 events, oh official God. events, wow. during Pittsburgh Beer Week. Wow, uh, it was ridiculous. Like a, yeah. The the lineup, the schedule, is 
is truly ridiculous. We actually met um, one of the uh, Colleen who works for uh, Pittsburgh Beer Week, and she was telling us about the events. They sounded fabulous. Now, but, did you, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. No, I was going to say, did you have any, like, what was your top beers uh, in, in the pit? Um, well, there's, I was, how about top places? There's, uh, yeah. there was some recommendations from some of the folks in the, in the chat room and other, uh, uh, Twitter friends. Uh, Church Brew Works. Yeah, It's All right. in an old Catholic church. It's sitting in pews, right. and the, uh, the brew kettles are all up on the uh, on the altar, and in the beginning part of it, you can actually sit on like that first like step up. There's like a bunch of tables there, but the but the church is ridiculously big. They had over 35 fermenters. Oh, uh, they're really getting into some sour stuff. Uh, wow. One of my favorite beers they had an uh, uh, an oaked age wheat wine. Hey now, delicious, delicious. And, and interesting, they're not just a brew pub, but um, about 60% of the beer that they make, they sell there, and 40% they sell in basically the metro Pittsburgh area. So they got a good they got a good reach outside of their own location. Nice. Um, we also went to the, uh, the Hofbrau House, which is uh, part of the uh, the German Hofbrau uh, group, uh, and it was a traditional German traditional German beer hall, awesome, great music, great food, uh, liters of cola. <laughs> now we're talking. <laughs> <laughs> it was just a really good time. Uh, we went to a long trail night at a place called Huff's. Um, that was pretty fun. They had uh, over 50 drafts for the different draft lines. Um, and on our last day, we stumbled in this place, and I, to me, it's heaven. It's called Pax and Dogs. So as you as you know in in Pennsylvania you can't sell anything sh smaller than a case in right. a in a store. So if you wanted to get a six pack, you actually have to go to um, a restaurant to get a six pack. Most places where we were only sold by the bottle, and if you wanted to get a six pack, you actually paid the bottle price. So there's no like there's no six pack price, but this place packs of dogs. Um, it was a bottle shop, small bar, with a big hot dog, hot dog vendor stand, like a big hot dog section. So you get a chili yeah. dog, kielbasa awesome. dog, uh, all sorts of just different, uh, different hot dogs. Yeah, I, I wanted to just uh, <laughs> grab my like suitcase and stay there. Awesome. <laughs> I went there when I went down to Pittsburgh. I bought about 100 bucks worth of beer. You, awesome. you went to pack the dogs? Yeah. Awesome what place. What town was that in? Pittsburgh? Yeah, Pittsburgh. Is it like north, like a little north of Pittsburgh, or right outside the city limits? I can't remember. No, it's it's on the south side. Oh, okay. You got to go all the way up the. They, they, I think they call it Mount Mount Washington. Oh yeah. But it's it was cool. They had more coolers of beer than many other places I've seen in New Hampshire, and you could you could buy a bottle and drink it at the bar. You could get anything from there, like eight draft lines, and drink it at the bar, or you could go and just take a mix six. And it was a mix six at like a really decent price. Yeah, they gave like, like a dollar something discount on each beer if you made a mix six, I think. Yeah. So it was it was pretty awesome. Neat. Now the only other things I, I mean I, I mentioned earlier I went to the Harpoon, um, the new uh, beer hall this the, today and it was just amazing. How were the pretzels? Uh, I didn't have any. <laughs> <laughs> the way you asked that. Instead. How were the pretzels? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I also uh, took a whirl, uh, took a spin at rock bottom today. So. Oh, you hit rock bottom today? I'm so hit, sorry. Hit rock bottom. Sorry. <laughs> awesome. Oh, yeah. Admitting that you have a problem. Right. It's okay. Exactly. Uh, yeah. so, so coming up, I have no idea what I'm even doing tomorrow. Yeah, no, it's true. <laughs> it's been a whirlwind. But uh, Carl, I didn't ask you. So uh, la last week, what's I mean, what's going on? Uh, so last week, uh, I actually hit up uh, the Lions Pride in Brunswick, um, and while I was there, I got to try two Oxbow beers. I've been looking forward to trying um, their 30th uh, birthday beer. Um, they just called it Freestyle Number 30. Uh, really interesting, kind of sour, funky. Um, had a lot of had a lot going for it. 
Uh, and then I also tried their Funk Works, which is an IPA uh, kind of brewed with Bortanomyces, so it's got that uh, it's got that funk. But what I liked about it was it was an IPA almost with this like extra spice to it, more than it was a sour beer. Like it was just, it was very very interesting. Um, I also uh, hung out at Navarre Res and finally got to try the Game of Thrones uh, beer this past weekend, the nice. uh, blonde. Um, my my official assessment is that it was a really really good blonde. Like it was so true to style. It was really nice, um, but it wasn't altogether by itself remarkable. But it was an, it was a really solid, good quality beer. So some people I know on Twitter, etc., have kind of like expressed disappointment in it. I thought it was a great beer. It's just not one of those ones that you like run around telling people how awesome it is, um, because it's just kind of very very true to style. Really nice. Uh, I thought it was well done. Um, upcoming this weekend on the 20th, which is, I think, Saturday, uh, Novari Res is doing an Oxbow event, which is their, they're calling it the second annual Farmhouse Funkadelic. Um, they're going to have 17 Oxbow beers on tap and some other random stuff. Um, and they're also going to have, like, a uh, DJ there playing, like, soul music and kind of crazy stuff outside. So I definitely, if you guys are bored on Saturday, come up because um, there's going to be some barrel-aged stuff, some older stuff, um, and they're just basically going to be taking over. So if you are a fan of Oxbow or if you haven't had, haven't had their stuff yet, uh, it's a good way of getting exposed to what they're doing. Awesome. That, that would be very cool. Uh, this old guy, uh, you're not interested in what, I, what I've got going on. <laughs> uh, nothing really. I, I went to Earth Eagle uh, that last weekend to check on some of their stuff. They had their black IPA back on. That um, Reginald Witherspoon, which is one of their other ones that, that was on. <laughs> that was a great name. Uh, a great na I mean, they're great names. Um, th there was an interesting conversation I had, which I won't get into now because we're running late. Uh, a, a woman walked in there. Uh, and and said, why do you only have a Facebook page? Why don't you have a website? I'll make one for you. But it's like it's, it kind of seems like the way that breweries are going, or any website really is kind of going all to Facebook. Which uh, I thought, I, 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 have you know. a real website, people. Have right, I guess say like a, a man right, walked into a bar with a fish on his head and said, yeah. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> as, as, a, as a designer and a web person, and the, just have a real website." So a lawyer, a beer geek, and a nun walk into a bar. <laughs> so, Mazel tov. <laughs> Mazel tov. <laughs> a punchline. Kapoom. But uh, no, uh, other than that, just uh, just kind of kind of doing my thing. I got my birthday next week, so I'll still be the youngest person on the – actually, no, I will not be. Mike and I will now uh, Trade be places. separated by a year. I'm young. Six months. <laughs> How old are you going to be? I'll be 27. You don't look a day under 35. Thank you, sir. And I'll take that as a compliment. But, with, <laughs> but again, but again I'll, I'll close out by saying this. Uh, we're 31 episodes in. Uh, tell a friend that we're, that we're still going here. Uh, spread the word. SBL Podcast. Things are going pretty good. Um, Shout-outs to people you see here on my thing here. we got Rick Brews, BM Darkside, BM Watts, Dukester, and Chatta. Uh, Sean, we have people in the chat room. Want to give a quick shout-out to? Uh, yep, we had uh, BM Darkside, uh, NH Brewer, Chatta, um, Craig, obviously. Damn it, Craig. Uh, it was a Dan. Le Dan was there, but then he left. Yeah. It wasn't. Yeah. Well, pretty awesome. good conversation well, today, though. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And uh, and we're gonna keep it up. You know, you gotta watch the live streams if you want in the in the show notes. We're gonna try to format for a little bit and then uh, keep it going. But Craig, thank you very much for hopping on, and I I, I hope you, you you come back with some more good news from uh, from down from down under in Mississippi. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, and we'll we'll uh, we'll raise a toast to you guys, and uh, and hope everyone's safe again in Boston, and uh, and and keep keep up keep up the the good craft beer news because you guys need that. Cheers. 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 Cheers.